Hi, Roller and Hughes discusses data collection in chapter four. And unfortunately, I am not in a formal classroom. I am mostly a hands-on military trainer. That's what I did in my time in the military for 10 years. Uh, however, the way we did our training was that we had to do several written and form and hands-on assessments in order for a trainee to be considered trained. Our standards require the trainee to pass the practice assessment with 90% consistently five times before being scheduled for their end of course exam. We needed the trainee to complete a task multiple times with 80% accuracy before signing off on the job for the hands-on portion. We had a tracking spreadsheet for all of the trainees that we annotated assignments and results. If the trainee is struggling, we will use differentiation to see where the disconnect is in the training. And from there, we will figure out what works and then we will reapproach the training with the trainee in order for them to retain the knowledge and skills and be successful in the military. I have not taught my trainees how to collect and organize the data outside of just inputting pass or fail in the spreadsheets. Sometimes we do pieces of training in small groups whenever we integrate new technologies in our work. Uh, Robo and Hughes tw in 2019 discusses how this could work by having three to five students in one center. The group would then rotate out with another group when learning different aspects of that technology. And at the end of the training, we discuss and demonstrate the proficiency of the activity. From there, the determination of the percentages was further up the chain of command at that time. Things may have changed since I got out, but I am looking forward to learning this aspect of research in the Education 518 class that I am currently taking with this course. And I appreciate your time taking a listen to what I'm doing. And I hope to see you again soon. Thank you.